Hey everyone and welcome to episode 9 of my Let's Build a Medieval Village series. This is the third part of the castle build and I'll be showing you how to build a grand hall. I'll just be showing you how to build the exterior in this video and the interior will be shown in the next episode. So I really hope you enjoy the video and if you have any feedback or questions please feel free to leave a comment. And if you missed the last episode where we built the castle keep then you can find the link to that in the description. Here's the outline of the build. I've marked this out using stone bricks and oak logs and it's placed on the same level that the keep is on, towards the back of the upper district. And here you can see the outline in relation to where the keep is. It's quite a tight spot so you might have to move the outline around a bit in your own worlds to get it to fit correctly. Just make sure there's a gap of a few blocks between the main walls and the keep to make sure you have enough room. Okay, so to start, at the front, come over to the right and add four oak logs on top of the log from the outline, making it five blocks tall in total. Then repeat this on the log next to this too. So it should look like this. After you've done that, fill in the two block gap between these with a mix of stone blocks. I'm using cobblestone near the bottom, then a mix of stone bricks, stone and andesite above this. When you've done that, come over to the left hand side and do the exact same. So make the oak logs 5 blocks high, then fill in the 2 block gap with a mix of stone blocks. The mix of blocks is completely random, so just do what you think looks the best. Now in the middle, where we have the stone bricks sticking out, make these 5 blocks high too, again using a mix of stone blocks. And directly in front of these 5 blocks, place a column of 10 mixed stone blocks, just like this. So the front should now look like this. Now, in between the 10 block high columns, add 3 spruce planks. Then make a step in front of all of this using spruce stairs, with the end stairs facing to the side, just like this. After that, count up 5 blocks on the 10 block high column and place an upside down stair on the 5th block. Do this on both sides. On top of the stairs, place a row of mixed stone blocks. And in front of these blocks, add 3 upside down stairs, with the left and right stairs facing to the side, like this to create a ledge. Then on the left and right, add 4 mixed stone blocks. You should now be in line with the top of the 10 block tall column. In the gap in the middle, add a stair at the bottom and the top to create a window space. Then add a couple of spruce fences to fill this in. Now at the top, add an upside down stair on each side of the window. And on top of these stairs, add stone with a stone brick slab in the middle, like this. Round to the side, add two more upside down stairs. Then add a slab on top of the first and stone on top of the second. So you should have something that looks like this. Now do the exact same on the other side too, to finish off this tower section. The front of the hall should now look like this. When you've done that, come round to the right again and over to the corner. Again here we're going to bring the logs up so that they're 5 blocks high in total. Then in the 3 block gap add 4 mixed stone blocks on the right but leave the middle empty. In the gap place a stair at the bottom and the top then fill it in with spruce fences to create a window. Now do the exact same in the next gap to the right of this. So 5 oak logs in total then a window space in the 3 block gap. When you've done the two windows, come round to the right again, to the side of the build. Just like the rest, we're going to bring the oak log up by another four, so it's five blocks tall. Then I'm just adding in some cobblestone along the bottom for texture. After that, leave a block, then add four mixed stone blocks coming up. Then repeat two more times, so you have three gaps in the wall, like this. Then add stairs at the bottom and top of the gaps to create window spaces and fill them in with spruce fences, just like we did with the other windows. Mm -hmm. 
The next corner is exactly the same as the one opposite, so the oak logs will come up by 5 blocks in total and each of the 3 block wide sections between these will have a 1 block window space in them, filled in with spruce fences. So it should look like this. And here it is from the inside. As you can see, the back is the same as the front. Now, at the back of the build, bring the oak logs up and fill in this two block wide section with mixed stone blocks, just like we did at the front. For this five block wide section that sticks out, start by removing the middle three blocks, like this. Then, just like we did at the front, we're going to bring the left and right blocks up so the five blocks high in total, again using mixed stone blocks. And directly in front of this, add 10 mixed stone blocks on each side. And you should have something that looks like this. Now, in the 3 block gap, come forwards by a block and add another 10 blocks, like this. Then do the same on the right hand side too. After that, add a block at the bottom with a stair on top. Then leave a 2 block gap and add an upside down stair. Above this, add a block, then add the stairs again, so you have two window spaces. And fill these in with spruce fences. Now, at the top, add upside down stairs on either side of the window space, with stone on top and a stone brick slab in the middle, just like we did at the front. Then, come round to the side and add two more upside down stairs, with a slab on the left and stone on the right and repeat on the other side too to finish this part off. The back tower should now look like this. For the remaining half of the build, we're going to repeat what we did on the other side. So all of the oak logs will need to come up by five blocks in total and we're going to fill in the two block wide section with mixed stone blocks. In the corner, we're going to have the two window spaces again, so one on each side just like we've done in the other two corners. And for the longer side wall, we're going to have three window spaces, exactly the same as the wall opposite. The mix of stone blocks is random, so the pattern of these doesn't have to be exactly the same. Then, for the final corner, add the window space on each side again. OK, so now that we have the first floor walls built, it's time to build the second floor. So, to do this, come to the front and over to the left. On the top oak log, add two more oak logs sticking out. Do this on each side. Underneath this, add an upside down spruce stair as shown. Then, at the top of the stone wall, add two upside down stone stairs. These can be stone brick, stone or andesite, it's up to you. Now, on top of the first oak log that sticks out, add five stripped spruce logs, like this and do the same on the other side too. After that, use some temporary blocks to place some sideways facing strip spruce logs on top of the stone stairs like this. And on top of these logs, add a mix of stripped oak logs and oak planks, going up by four blocks to fill in the two block wide gap. Then, in front of the spruce logs, add two upside down spruce stairs to cover them up. Now, come over to the right and do the exact same. So, add two oak logs that stick out with upside down spruce stairs below them and upside down stone stairs at the top of the wall. Then add the five stripped spruce logs on top of the first oak log on each side. Add the sideways facing spruce logs across the bottom, then fill in the two block wide gap with a mix of stripped oak logs and oak planks. And finish it off with the upside down spruce stairs in front of the logs. Now, to decorate the front, add some azalea and flowering azalea leaves on top of the spruce stairs, like this. Then, add a spruce button on the oak logs that stick out, with a couple more leaf blocks at the bottom. After that, add a spruce trap door on the bottom oak log, just like this. Then hang a lantern from the oak log next to the tower. 
Now do the same on the other side too. Sew leaves at the top and bottom, spruce buttons on the logs, hang up a lantern and add the spruce trap doors at the bottom of the logs to finish off the front of the build. Now coming round to the corner, add the two oak logs that stick out again on the left and right, but not in the middle. Then add the upside down spruce stair below them. After that add an upside down stone stair on each side of the window at the top. Do this on both sides. Then fill in the space next to the stripped spruce log as mobs could potentially spawn in this gap. And add the five stripped spruce logs on top of the first oak log. So you have something that looks like this. After that add three sideways facing stripped spruce logs across the bottom. Then add a mix of stripped oak logs and oak planks on the left and right, leaving the middle empty. In the gap add an oak stair at the bottom and the top to make a window space, then fill this in with spruce fences. Then do the exact same on the next side too. So five stripped spruce logs followed by the logs across the bottom. Then make the window space using stripped oak logs, oak planks and oak stairs and fill it in with spruce fences. Now in front of the sideways facing logs add upside down spruce stairs going all the way around like this. Then decorate by adding azalea and flowering azalea leaves on top of these. Add the spruce buttons on the logs, more azalea leaves at the bottom and spruce trap doors on the bottom oak logs to finish off the corner. Now come round to the side wall. This uses the exact same concept that we did in the corner, so repeat everything that we did there for this wall too, except now we have three window spaces. Remember to fill in the space next to the stripped spruce log so nothing can spawn here. As this wall's longer, we'll be adding four stairs along the top of the wall this time. Then the five stripped spruce logs on each side with the sideways facing logs across the bottom. On top of these logs we'll be making three window spaces using a mix of the oak blocks again. And filling them in with spruce fences. Now this is where the design changes a bit. In front of each of the windows add a stripped spruce log sticking out of the sideways facing logs, like this. And in the gaps between them add spruce slabs. Then add dark oak buttons on the stripped spruce logs. On top of this, in the middle add three grass blocks. Then surround them with spruce trap doors to create a planter and add a sweet berry bush on the left and right. And the rest of the decorations are the same as we did for the other sides. So spruce buttons on the oak logs, azalea leaves along the bottom and spruce trap doors on the bottom oak logs to finish it off. And that's the side wall finished. Now the next corner is exactly the same as the one opposite, so do the exact same here as you did at the front. I'm sure you've got the idea now so I won't bore you by going through each section step by step but if you do get stuck, feel free to look back in the video if you need to. And you guessed it, these two sections at the back are exactly the same as the ones at the front. The only difference is we're not going to add the lanterns next to the tower here. Finally, the remaining two corners and side wall are exactly the same as the walls opposite. So if you get stuck at any point, feel free to look back in the video or copy what you've already done.
and here's the build with the second floor walls added. As you can see, both sides are exactly the same. Ok, so now that all of that's done, we're going to add in the floors inside the build. So, to do this, come inside and turn to face the front. Where the oak log is on the left, add a spruce stair facing to the side, then add three more next to it coming across like this. After that, add a stair behind the last one, with another next to it, so it comes in like this. Then repeat once more. Now, come over to the right hand side and do the same again. So a sideways facing stair in front of the log, with three more coming across next to it. Then bring the stairs in twice, just like we did on the other side, and join them together in the middle. And you should now have something that looks like this. When you've done that, fill in the gap behind the stairs with spruce planks. Now do the exact same on the back wall, just like this. And fill in the gap behind these stairs with spruce planks again. After that, remove all of the ground in the middle and replace it with dark oak planks, just like this. If you've done it correctly, the front and back floor sections should line up perfectly. Ok, for the second floor, come to the front and place sideways facing strip spruce logs on top of the stone wall, going across to the other side like this. In front of this, add a row of spruce slabs placed on the top half of the block. Add an extra slab below the first and last slab to fill in the gap here too. Then add another row of sideways facing strip spruce logs. So it should be starting to look like this. Now repeat this for the entire floor, so alternating strip spruce logs and spruce slabs to create this striped pattern. To light up the bottom floor, hang up some lanterns in front of the oak logs around the room. Now all of that's done, we can start work on the roof. So, starting at the front, come over to the right and add a spruce plank on top of the strip spruce log, like this. Then, directly in front of the spruce plank, add a dark oak plank. Then, using slabs, add another block, half a block down from this, with a slab at the end, like this. Now, next to the first block, add a slab in line with the top of it. Then add a dark oak stair on top. After this, add an upside down stair with another stair on top, like this. Then add another upside down stair with a slab on top, followed by two blocks made using slabs that come up by half a block each time. Now come over to the left and we're going to do the same thing again. So add a spruce plank on top of the strip spruce log and add a dark oak plank directly in front of it. Then add another plank half a block down from this with a slab sticking out of the bottom half. After that, add a slab in line with the top plank and add a stair on top of it. Then add an upside down stair, a stair and another upside down stair like this. On the upside down stair, add a slab followed by two blocks coming up, with a final block in the middle to join the two sides together just like this. Here's a diagram of this part of the roof outline to help you visualise it better. Ok, now come round to the right and over to the corner section. Here we're going to bring the bottom slab round the corner, following the shape of the walls, like this. Make sure the slabs are in front of the stripped spruce logs. Now, for the side roof outline, add two more blocks that come up by half a block each time, with a slab at the end like this. On top of the slab, add a stair with an upside down stair on the back. Then, on top of the stair, add a slab followed by a block, like this. 
Now come over to the right and add a spruce plank on top of the stripped spruce log, just like we did at the front. And add the dark oak plank in front of this with a block coming down and a slab at the end. After that add a slab in line with the top block with a stair on top and an upside down stair on the back of that. On top of the stair add a slab then a block and finish with a final block in the middle to complete this side of the roof outline. And here's a diagram of what this side should look like too. Now at the back bring the bottom slab around the corner again just like we did at the front. The outline for this side is exactly the same as the outline at the front so repeat everything that we've already done at the front here too. You can follow the graphic on screen or look back in the video if you get stuck. And for the final side, bring the slabs around the corner and then we're going to repeat the side roof outline again. The graphic on screen will help you if you get stuck. Now all of the roof outlines are in place, we can start filling in the roof. So, to do this, come over to the corner. In line with the dark oak outline, bring spruce slabs across to the other side, following the shape of the corner like this. For the next layer, use spruce planks following the same shape. And for the layer after that, use spruce stairs. Now for the next layer, start at the side roof outline and come back using spruce slabs, like this, stopping when you get to the corner. For the front outline, come across using spruce stairs. Here we're going to go all the way across to the back, so keep going until you reach the other roof outline. Don't worry if you place any stairs incorrectly, just take your time and you'll manage it. Now come over to the side again and add another layer of spruce slabs leading up to the stairs. When you reach the stairs, remove one and add a slab there instead like this. And for the top row, come across using dark oak slabs. Again, when you reach the stairs, remove one and add a dark oak slab there instead. Here's what you should have so far. Now for the next few layers of the front outline, go all the way across to the back using spruce slabs. If you've done the outlines correctly, they should all line up perfectly. When you get to the very top, go all the way across using dark oak slabs. Now, the next corner is exactly the same as what we've just done, so just follow the shape of the corner using the block type from the outline. So spruce slabs when there's a slab, and spruce stairs when there's a stair. If you get stuck, you can look back in the video or have a look at what you've already built. And for the rest of the roof it's the same again. Again, you can look back in the video if you get stuck here. Ok, so now that the main part of the roof is built, we need to fill in the gaps below it. So, at the front, add some upside down spruce stairs between the stripped spruce logs, like this. Do this on both sides. When you've done that, on top of the stairs, add alternating stripped spruce and normal spruce logs to fill in the gap. When you get to the middle, add some spruce slabs going across so you can place the logs on top of them. And at the top of the tower, add some stone to fill in the gap here. Then carry on adding the alternating spruce logs to fill in the rest of the gap. If you've got space above the log, add a slab here to fill it in. When it's done, it should look like this. Now, at the corner, come underneath the roof and add an upside down spruce stair on each side with a spruce slab in the middle for a bit more detail and structure. For the side wall, we're going to do something very similar. 
So, start by adding upside down spruce stairs next to each of the windows, like this. And in between these stairs, add spruce slabs. On top of this, add the alternating spruce logs again. This time I'm starting with normal spruce logs, then the stripped spruce, so it's a bit different to the front. And here's what it should look like when it's done. Now repeat for the back and the other side too. They're the same as what we've just done. And don't forget to add the stairs and slab in the corner too. If you get stuck, feel free to look back in the video to where I took you through it step by step. Now that the main structure's done, the roof's looking a bit plain, so we're going to add some more detail to it. So, to do this, at the front add an upside down stair with a couple of slabs on top sticking out of the roof outline, just like this. Then add dark oak slabs spaced one block apart along the top of the roof. At the end add the upside down stair with the slabs on top again. So you should now have this. For the side roof, remove the top dark oak slab and add a dark oak stair there instead, like this, with an upside down stair on the back of it so it sticks out. Then add dark oak slabs along the top, spaced one block apart. When you get to the main roof, remove the spruce slabs and replace with a dark oak slab with an extra on top so they stick out like this until you get to the top. Then come over to the other side and do the same again. So remove the dark oak slab and add a stair here with an upside down stair on the back of it. Then add the dark oak slabs. When you get to the top, add two extra slabs in the middle so this sticks up higher than the rest. Now, to the side of this, on the main part of the roof, where the first row of stairs is, leave the first one, then remove five after that. Then, using temporary blocks, place a dark oak stair facing to the side like this. And do the same on the other side too. After that, add an upside down stair on the back of them with another stair on top. Then, in the middle, add a dark oak slab with a stair on top and an upside down stair on the back of it, like this. To finish it off, come behind this and remove the middle spruce stair so the others connect. Then, add dark oak slabs leading up to the top of the roof. These slabs will be in line with the spruce slabs this time. And finally, add one extra dark oak slab after the stair to finish it off. Now repeat this three more times for the three remaining sides. They're all exactly the same. If you get stuck, you can look back in the video or copy what you've already built. Now, to finish this build off, we're just going to add a few more lanterns. So, come over to the bottom corner of the roof and add a chain with a lantern hanging from it, like this. Repeat this on the other side too. Then do the same for all of the remaining corners on both sides and at the back to finish it all off. And that's the grand hall completed. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you liked the build and enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to leave any feedback or questions in the comments, and if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you aren't already.